Hello and welcome to the Peter Crouch podcast with me, David James. Peter Crouch and Chris Stark are here with me as usual. All right, boys. Hello. What, what an intro. <laughs> Good intro. I didn't expect anything less. Do you need me for anything else? No. <laughs> Listen, mate, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on, James. I played with him. You know, England, Portsmouth, we've had some some good times. I know he's a character, but also a fantastic goalkeeper and a good person. So, good to have him on. So, we had a great chat with Aaron Ramsdale about his stats. There's been so much stuff on social I've seen about that Aaron Ramsdale episode. It was a good one, right? Really good, yeah. Um, a new tool in our armoury. I'm not describing you as a tool, Dave. I just think... <laughs> it's like, People it's, have called me that before, Chris, so I'll, I'll take it. Look, I'll take it. It's a good thing. You're Mr. Stats really. And I think it brings a whole new thing uh, to the podcast. It's been good to hire an so analyst. It does. Aaron Ramsdale absolutely loved it, didn't he? he was yeah. really involved. involved. Are you a stato? I'm a stato, unfortunately. Okay. Bit I boring. Love, I love stato. Jamo's a bit of a stato Ooh. himself. Yeah. So it could be a stat off here. So I challenged Opta. Uh-oh. Okay. That's not my gang. Well, I know. Yeah, yeah, but, that's but, part of my gang, yeah. I've got to respect him. But, but Opta used to do this stat about shots and the value of a shot. So and I argued, well, if a guy shoots from 40 yards and chips it into the goalie's hands, it counts the same as a two-yard thunderbolt reflex, say. Mm. It can't be right. So, so the, then they started grading the quality of save. But that's the same yeah. as shots on target, no? Well, it's, shots it's on kind target of, is like I could hit one from, you know, the halfway line that keeps catching the same thing. Mm. Yeah, but is that's that what you're saying. Time? You shouldn't be judged on, on every shot on target being the same type of shot. Like, yeah. you, you're obviously a much, I'm going to say, better goalie if you can save these thunderous shots that were only three yards yeah, yeah. I could save shots from the other side of the pitch that were technically a shot on target. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like a challenge. Um, <laughs> I probably couldn't. But that actually sounds crazy. You could do this as a listen, challenge. I'm, I'm sticking up for you here. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. Come on then, let's talk Pompey. Was this where you both bonded? Became Bezies? What, what happened? <laughs> Didn't become Bezies? I think we bonded <laughs> there. <laughs> well, no, we, we, our first met James, I think, was England first, I think. Um, and then I, and I have to say he was very good with me. You know, he was an experienced player in the England dressing room. I was around sort of, you know, big, some big hitters in that dressing room there. And I was a young lad sort of coming into it. 2005, I think I came into it and Jamie had a lot of caps. It always looked after me. You know, I can't speak high enough of how he was with me in that, at that time. And then we sort of went to Liverpool and, you know, ended up at Portsmouth. And that team just won the FA Cup. And I was walking into a, Top team, it sounds mad, but we we had such a good so how many good players we have in that dressing room, but we had so many good people in that dressing room as well. It was a good time to be at Portsmouth. I mean, I love those guys, most of them. Um <laughs> <laughs> so, no, let me just say this now. There was if you, if he did Damo didn't like you, he was very quick to let you know. I think you just gotta be honest about things. Oh, do you remember uh no I'm not I, 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 I wanna bring this story up. So we had a we're going out to Manchester and uh, one of our, I think, teammate. I, I always get confused with teammates. Like someone in your team is your mate, but they might play for your team, they're not your mate. So they were they? Yeah, team yeah. not mate. Right, so one of our <laughs> team not mate. <laughs> team not mate. <laughs> he, um, <laughs> that. He, he was sort of involved in the card school and I think he went to the toilet at some point on the, on the, on the journey and we went, right, when we get to the hotel, we'll play a game, but he's not invited. Right, yeah. And then we went in the physio room. <laughs> <laughs> went in the physio room and next door, the door was open. And inside the room next door was like loads of stacked up chairs and we're all in there like that, playing cards, <laughs> trying to hide from this guy. Hello, hello, hello. He found us. I'm devastated. <laughs> Absolutely devastated. Is this a footballer? He is. I can't go any further. Than that. <laughs> well, and do you know who it is? <laughs> Firstly, <laughs> for anyone who played for Pauls for that time knows exactly who they Wow. Yeah. This is the team not mate. <laughs> team not mate. This is the new parched, by the way. Oh, I liked him. So he was your mate? He wasn't J Mo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we came across each other at England for the first time. But what? Uh, how did you find England, playing for England, and your career as a whole? It's a good question. Because um, I, I was basically involved with England from debut to last game over 13 years. So I was, I was kind of like good and bad and good and bad. And it was, you know, it was like Tottenham this season. They win one and lose one. I was sort of in one squad and out the next one. Um, I found at the beginning, 
it was a struggle. Well, you know what it's like. You've got your club, you know, talking about Portsmouth and how great a club that was. And I always found that if the club environment was fundamentally different to the England environment, then it could have a negative or a positive effect. And if you're in a bad club, you love going away with England. Um, if you're in a great club, then England became more difficult just to try makes, and fit That in. makes sense, yeah. Um, yeah. And different managers. I mean, early doors. I used to go there and the manager used to say, hmm, those mistakes you keep making. I'm thinking, why are you bringing me if you keep telling me I make mistakes? Didn't make any sense. And it wasn't until sort of the 2000s. Then I, I changed professionally, um, become an athlete, proper athlete, and more capable, I think, as a goalkeeper. Then you go in there with a challenge to actually be, be the number one, stay as number one, and try and win things with England um, who, rather than just be part of a squad. Who was the England manager that got the best out of you, would you say? Oh, that's a good question. Did, did you ever that's feel a, as well? That's a good question. Did you ever feel as well like you were number one? Or did you Yeah, always, yeah, at yeah? times. That's, it's, it's a weird one. Um, Capello, I think, you know, yeah. answers that question. Um, did he drop me? Kind of dropped me. Can't drop me twice. Ended my so career. What did he do? What do I like him? What did he, yeah. <laughs> 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 you see, when, when you said that, I thought, I, I remember those things as well. Like, Why has he said that? But you did play well under him as well. Yeah, I, well, I, again, so it's a really weird thing. You know, you asked about this England thing. If you're, I think frustration in Liverpool was, I was playing well for Liverpool. Uh, sort of 94, 95, whenever it was. I was playing well. I was keeping a lot of clean sheets. How many? Loads of clean sheets. Uh, exactly. That's an official stat, by official the way. Official stats. Um, <laughs> but I just couldn't get an England team. Couldn't, first of all, I couldn't get in the squad. And I was like, England team's been announced. Oh, okay. What do you want to do this weekend, love? Because uh, I had the weekend Who was off. number one? Because your competition at that time was hot. Dave good... Seaman. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it wasn't about me being number one. It was about getting in the squad and playing against. So who so, were they? Dave they... Seaman, what, Tim Flowers? Nigel Tim Martin. Flowers a bit, Nigel Martin and Ian Walker. Ian Walker. And we played Tottenham. Do you know what? I love playing at White Hart Lane. It was one of those grounds. Played at White Hart Lane, came off the pitch and Walks like, oh, you'll be squatted up this time. I'm thinking if Walks is saying it, it must be true. And ironically, made my debut at probably the worst period of form in my Liverpool career, mm. except for 98, 99 season. It was pretty poor. Um, Played the game one two, and as I said, came off. Give oh, I give the kids. There was some kid in the crowd. I chucked my gloves because I had this thing about clean sheets and chucking my gloves away. And he looked at me, and it was like, shit, I shouldn't give them to you. I wanted I wanted them back. What? Well, because he, he was because he, it was like he could tell he didn't give want me them. those gloves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like your special like it had a small logo on it because just in case it got in the World Cup, which never happened. So he's got a pair of one-off gloves. But you didn't I feel he was back. A Do you feel he wasn't? appreciative of them is that what you're saying or is it just you wanted the gloves to keep I maybe could have jumped around a little bit and <laughs> oh said, well, he didn't Jamie, look yeah, he didn't look excited like, oh, okay so give him away I'll take him <laughs> oh go on then <laughs> it's one of those yeah. isn't it Do I yeah. have to, oh, okay <laughs> yeah. yeah I think you're probably in your rights to go and say I want them back please yeah, I, now I should no, no, well. no, no, like they had the time as well oh, no, like, no, you're not excited I'll give them to someone else what would be great if one of those kids said you know how they're all holding up like can I have your shirt please and then they can turn around and just says not you <laughs> 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 I'll have anyone's shirt by yours. Oh. Yeah. But it, uh, yeah, so it was kind of played the game and then got bombed out of the squad straight after, pretty much. Um, Do you think really? that's why the change in mentality has come with England? Because it feels like Gareth Southgate's more of a, a father figure, very open minded, versus this seems like a bit of friction with someone that's, you know, they could, they'd be better if they were supporting a keeper. There, there's a communication level between Gareth and his squad now, which is. Nothing like what was before. Before you used to turn up and it was kind of like, right, we'll do some training. Well, all I remember is turn up, doing some training and playing or not, obviously more often than not, not playing. Um, whereas it seems like Gareth has that level of communication where people kind of know what their role is in the England and not like you're coming in, you're going to yeah. be number uh, a sub for three years. It's more a case of well, you're coming in to see how you get on, blah, blah, blah. And uh, that, that whole environment that Gareth's got now means that if you're part of that England squad, then you've got to believe that you're wanted and maybe valued to be part of potentially a World Cup winning side in December. I, you know what, I'm, I'm obsessed with the era that you played in, Jay. I know I played with you, but you played for a hell of a long time. But that era before, like in the 90s, what was the England squad like in those days? <laughs> wow. How 
compared to when when I got in there in 2005. Oh, this, this sounds. I, I don't know how much I can go on, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think I'll say this because it was it was true and it was uh, indicative of football back in the nineties. But you would meet up, um, go in a hotel, and be like, hey, you'd meet the gaffer in the bar at the hotel. <laughs> And everyone would have a drink. And it was, it was fine, you know, the uh, hotel bar, so it stayed open late, and everyone was, would just drink. And then the following night, it would probably go in there again and have more drinks. Is this drinks. international, do you mean? Or? Yeah, this is, but this is football. This isn't yeah. just England doing things wrong. This is just the way football was, except for maybe one or two international teams, continental teams who didn't do that. But um, that was normal. Um, and we had a fantastic mm. squad. We had a, the, we talk about camaraderie, well, that 90s group, when you got the likes of Gazza, Paul Ince, um, trying to think, Alan Shearer, oh, righty, mm. all these guys. So it was fun to be around. I mean, we used to, you know, on a day off, we'd go fishing with Dave Seaman and Gazza, or I would anyway. I could well, like, like, I'm absolutely like desperate to know, I'm sure listeners are like, just that being involved in that, going fishing with Se you know, David Seaman and being around Gazza, like you say, having a having a drink, Kevin Keegan in the bar, what, you know, it, like, I can't, it just, it's amazing to me, as a fan, even, you know, even. And it, it, it was special because it was, as I say, the camaraderie was so good and we didn't have the security detail that they have now. Um, if you, you imagine being an England squad now, you, you know, you've got to have passes to get everywhere and all the floors are locked off with uh, security guards. Back then, it was a lot more relaxed. At this point, I am obsessed with football. Like, I'm, you know, I, you I love football now, but I'm, I was obsessed. So at that time, like, I was, I was just desperate to know more about had the you inside heard, of it. Had you heard of the Queen Vic? No. You haven't heard of the Queen well, Vic? On EastEnders. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, this, this, I, I think, so, I'm, I'm hoping someone has said this story before. Um, <laughs> just, so, just so I don't get myself into trouble. So we'd turn up, like I say, we'd have the, you know, Saturday or Sunday night, Monday night, down in the bar, and then like Tuesday night, we would, you know, migrate to, I think it was either, I think it was Dave Seaman's room or Paul Ince's room. We'd have the PlayStation on. One of the lads would be playing Lara Croft. I, I don't know why you'd like communally play Lara Croft because only one person... Single player person. game. Yeah, it's gone like, okay, all right, I'll have a go. I'll off. be Lara. <laughs> uh, I'll have a go after you in about an hour. In an hour. Yeah. Um, and then all, all I can remember is like smoke, because I used to smoke back then, um, smoking and drinking beer in the room. Wednesday training session. But as we get warmed up, it's like, ah, Queen Vic open tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have a look. So is this one of the rooms? Is that your room specifically? Not or, in my room. Or, or, no, no, no. no, no. In, a room. In the Queen, or the Queen Vic. Anyone who knows the Queen Vic knows Queen Vic. That's the room. So we would uh, go there for a cheeky little one, get one of the... Yeah. And then go and win. I mean, this is the thing. This is an England team that was losing. This was an England team that was qualifying for the World Cup 98. Um, Euro 96. Euro 98. 96. Yeah. So whatever the culture was, it effectively was good. I mean, I wasn't in either of those squads, so maybe if I'd been there, we would have won something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's an important point you're saying. There was team spirit. Yeah. And okay, some of the uh, creation of that team spirit might not be like, like how it is right now, but it bonded you all. Absolutely. Do, do, and do, the do, performances matched up. Yeah. yeah. Do you think there's like a, an element of it, like if... If it had been like it was now, that team could have won something. Like, or, or was it that the team was so together because of that bonding that you had? It's, it's a wonderful question. It's almost like who's better, Pele or Messi? At different times. Yeah, so if we'd have had the influences then that we have now, then every other team would have had the same influences and arguably we'd end up with the same situation because they would have been better as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, it yeah. does. But my only worry is that the French and the Italians might... I've been doing it properly. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did mention two continental teams and you've just kind of thrown them out on the table. Yeah. Do, uh, do you know what I find, do you know what I find really it's interesting? It's a valid point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Touche. Um, I, hey, don't get me wrong, I would have loved to have played in this era as well. Like, love, I, I felt like my era was, a, I was in a crossover sort of period where, you know, between the sort of not as professional and then professional. Yeah. I, I, you know, and I, I know which one I preferred. 
But you, <laughs> <laughs> you did get a chance at playing as striker, didn't you? Of course. Mm. For how many Depends minutes? Who you ask. How many minutes? <laughs> seemed like fifteen, but apparently it was about five. <laughs> can we can we talk through can we, that can experience? We, can we, um, You've can played we, up front for City. Can we assess your performance in that um, demo for a minute? How do you think it went? I won every header. Did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally won every header. Uh, Is that I, why I, you were I, there? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, wait, can can I just quickly go through the Why story? were you there? Here's the story, right? <laughs> we're, we're playing Middlesbrough, last game of season. We're on equal points. They have a better goal difference, virtue of the fact that they scored more than we let in more. And we had to beat them to finish in Europe. Simple. Um, first half, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank decided to do a two-step run-up from 30 yards and smash it into the top corner. Embarrassing. Some goal. I watched that this morning. Like, wow. Oh, it was horrible. Horrible. At half time, Chappie, who oh, Kitmen. I don't know if you've talked about Kitmen on the podcast. Yeah. He um half time he goes, I've got his shirt printed. I'm like, what are you on about? And he went, I've printed his shirt. I'm like, what the f and I said, forget about it. Don't worry about it. And he went out for the second half. And then with what seemed like 15 minutes, but it was apparently three minutes to go, Nicky Weaver is stood on the side and the board goes up. Now I hadn't seen Nicky warm up because I was so focused on the game. It's one all at this time. Um, and I'm like, so I started walking towards the, the centre circle or centre halfway line. And then this shirt comes out. Claudio Reyna gets substituted off. Nicky Weaver goes in goal. And I've got an outfield shirt with number one on. The only one in the Premier League's history, which I gave but to James, Sorry, I've got so many questions God. quickly. I've got so many questions. <laughs> Like my questions are coming out and flying out of me, but that, like what you so you weren't you're telling me you were not told that yeah. you were gonna you were potentially gonna this go. This wasn't up front. a plan. At any oh, this time. was a plan, but yeah. I, I didn't know about. But it. But why did no? So no. So Stuart Pearce's manager. Yeah, is that correct. He didn't. He printed a shirt up, and didn't think to tell you beforehand that this might happen. I think it must have. He must have had other things on his mind. Oh. <laughs> 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 when did you realise you're going up front? When the shirt came out. <laughs> but so the manager has got this shirt printed with an so they've obviously what number was it number one number one outfield so yeah I didn't change numbers yeah, I mean, there, there would have been a load no, of but forms my point to is, fill my out my point is the... the shirts come out you surely you don't then know you're going to be up front right you don't or have you just done like for like you're not looking at the manager going Hello? No, no, well, okay, and I, it, it was remiss of me not to ask what he intended me to do on that field, but I just assumed that I would just, I don't know. Go and cause carnage. But he actually didn't, he didn't mention to you beforehand that you could potentially go up front, but he printed a shirt. Crouchy. Had, and this is, the, this is the really annoying thing about it. Had he mentioned it the day before, Jamer, I'm thinking I might chuck you up top at some point right at the end of the game for two minutes. I'm out for another hour at the end of that training session, practicing my touch, practicing my shooting, practicing my head. So you didn't, you didn't want to... Oh, I would have. And then all of a sudden, it would have been the most inspired substitutional change But do you ever. think the reason he didn't do that is because he's thinking he wants you to concentrate on actually winning the game anyway, but hopefully we don't need you yeah. in that oh. role. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. He, he hasn't just <laughs> forgotten. You don't just forget. I won every header, and I, I think... I must have fouled eight Middlesbrough players. <laughs> eight Middlesbrough There was two of them were just I fouled two in one... Really good. <laughs> one, in yeah. one tackle. <laughs> that, that lunge for me was one of the best things I've ever seen in the Premier League era. That, that was that one lunge. <laughs> oh. What's your mindset? So, so, okay, let's fast forward slightly so the substitutions happen. Is your first point as Carnage, put, uh, as, as Crouchy put it, to just cause carnage? Is that just oh, your that first wasn't intentional. thought? Oh, no, 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 no. But I, this is the crazy thing. It's kind of like, I, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to play. I mean, I, Stuart Pearce has said since, in recent years, that he wanted me to play as a number nine, but I ended up playing in a number 10 role. But it was like... Do you slipped in straight in behind the front? From midfield, get it all turning off, slip the strikers in. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, I think John Mackham was on the bench <laughs> as a centre forward. John, is, this, is this the same John Macken that scored in the derby? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he didn't get a he didn't get a run out, but J Mo did. Did you have that conversation? Me and John haven't spoken since. He we can't blame me. I didn't yeah, even know. No, it's not <laughs> but did John take that badly? Did anyone oh, I, speak I, to John I, afterwards? I can't remember. I, I've seen the video footage of the um, of the final whistle, and I'm fuming. I don't even 
want to speak to anyone because we didn't win. And Robbie Fowler missed a penalty. Remember it. Remember and the worst thing about day, the penalty, I'm on day. the left-hand side. It's obvious you go my side. And he went the other way. And Schwartz sort of saved it and then saved it again. Do you think it was the right should've decision the from the manager? Yeah, because Robbie Fowler should have scored the penalty and there would have been a... Oh, it would have been but a also, it is a genius <laughs> move. Like, you know, not telling anyone. And like, did that, and if, it, if that had worked, that would have been one of the best managerial decisions of all time. Yeah. It just caused carnage. Something but, so but different Bacucci, off the wall. The manager knew about it, right? I assume whoever printed the shirt knew about it. It was, a, it was clearly meant to be a close circle. It was a circle. Because even... Yeah. You talk about the kit man, right? I'm surprised the kit man would have been aware of the shirt situation and didn't tell you. And who did you say it was? Chappie. Chappie. Is he still kit man at City? He's still involved with City. He's not the, not the kit man. So right? he, he pretty, chose pretty not up. to tell you. Well, I can only assume that Stuart Pearce said, print the shirt, don't tell him. Mm. Yeah. Then it, Chappie is I compromising, think isn't he's he? thinking, I think he's thinking there's a 5% chance that if we're losing, I'm going to throw Jay Mo on, print it anyway, just in case. And he's not told anyone. And, it's happened and it's one of the <laughs> finest Premier League moments. Yeah. But so just one last question on this. Um, <laughs> you played, what, six hundred Premier League, the most, that you'll tell us, Dave, yeah, right? The most, ever keep played more than any other goalkeeper. Must be in the top five or top yeah, six. Top five, fifth. Top fifth of most Premier League appearances of all time. Of all the times you, you, you stood there, you must have thought like, oh, I'd love to have a go at that. Or like, and then you get the chance. Yeah, didn't, I wish it would work that way. We played Man United when I was at Liverpool. And I caught a cross. And I was, we were winning 2-0 late into the game. And I was gutted after the game that I didn't catch it, throw it and run after it because Schmeichel had pushed up. Then I could have sprinted down the pitch and scored. Wow. I've, I've gone through this scenario a few times in my head as well. The only one I was worried about was Ryan Giggs catching me. But I reckon if I'd thrown it... <laughs> yes, not Give him, him, him a shoulder. If, if I'd have thrown <laughs> it far so... enough, I could have actually shot from my own half and scored. Now, you see, goalies never do this. And, that, and any goalie that's listening to this right now, that's a legitimate regret. If they've ploughed their goalie forward last bit of the game, stop trying to give it to an outfield player. Go have the... If you catch it, have the confidence to go yourself. Boom. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. If you could, I massive. was quick, so it... And he had it... Because it always goes in. out. The natural instinct is to, the whole crowd, go, go, go. Like, send it out. Yeah. Calm for a couple of seconds. And blast it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Fucking blast it. <laughs> yeah. Relax, compose, and fucking blast. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be now part of the FA coaching course for goalkeepers. Guardiola's all over it. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. Compose. Compose. And fucking <laughs> blast off. <laughs> Puex. <laughs> Compose. <laughs> and fucking blast off. <laughs> Every time you see Guardiola now, like chatting Relax. to Edison, like, <laughs> Compose. <laughs> fucking blast off. <laughs> Yeah, Jamie, I've got to ask you about the Spice Boys era. I know it's quite, it's very famous and, you know, the white suits. Let's do this properly. Spice Boys era, I wasn't a Spice Boy. I was too old. What was a Spice Boy at that what, time? The, the, them youngsters, you know, like when you're, you know, when you're 26, like a 22 year old a youngster. So who are you looking at? Name the Spice Boys. Um, well, the lads that came actually, through. Probably only a year younger than me. Um, I, I, I think it was, was it Stan? Phil Babb, Jason McAteer, maybe Macca, maybe Robbie, kind of. There was more than five, you know. Um, yeah, because Babsy was Scary Spice. Um, <laughs> and I kind of got brought into the Spice Spice Boys posthumously. Is that right? Is that the right word? That means you're dead. My Liverpool, Liverpool career was dead. Yeah. Yes, so <laughs> posthumously. <laughs> At the back end of it, really. <laughs> yeah. Was that, was that down... Right, I'll rephrase. You can edit that. <laughs> um, retrospectively, I was yeah. sort of put into the Spice Boys. So I was, was that I down was to... Was I was that jealous because it was kind of like, why can't I be a Spice Boy? Obviously, you're too old. Was that down to your modelling career? Um, with regards to the modelling thing, that was... A... <laughs> so Stan signs for, for Liverpool, record signing, I think 6.7 million or whatever it was at the time. And uh, the guy from Arena on Plus, this guy contacts me and he goes, look, we're thinking of doing a feature with you and Stan because you both have blonde hair. Now, I didn't have blonde hair at the time I had in the season before. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, Stan's up for it. We'll, we'll do it. So he says, yeah, we're going to do it on Sunday. Da, da, da. 
And uh, on this, I've done, done my hair blonde. Hang on a minute. So they want to take photos of you, but they've said, but we'd like you to be blonde. Yeah. yeah. It was me and Stan because we, we both had blonde hair and he was, yeah. well, Stan was the record signing and I was just a goalie who looked like him at times. And um, Stan had, there was fog in Canuck, so Stan couldn't make it, which was a regular occurrence. Because uh, Canuck apparently is one of the foggiest places. I don't know if you've got <laughs> So he can't do fog. 95% of the time. He won't appear in fog. <laughs> yeah, he's um, <laughs> saying he's... He's foggy. <laughs> That's that, Dave. Yeah, he really is. Apparently he's terrible in Canuck. Fine. Um, so the guy who was organised said, fuck that, we'll just do it with you. So I'm like, you sure? And he said, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, so the uh, following day, we're in the car park in Liverpool. We do all these photographs, da, da, da. guy called Norman Watson, who is the photographer. And... Uh, I love Norman because he was doing press-ups and like little sprints around the car park to get himself psyched up. And I'm thinking, all you're doing is taking photos. But apparently the photos come out better if you're full of adrenaline. Yeah. (laughs) Now the thing is, I I wasn't a model. So for me, it was just a bit of a laugh. So we did the photos, got on the cover. Then all of a sudden, I'm contacted by Armani's press office. Well, they contact Norm Watson, sorry. And they said they really like the photos. They would like you to do some photos to put yourself in with a chance of doing a campaign. Full frontal. Whatever goes, I suppose. Um, and my thing was, oh, Armani. Yeah, okay, cool, why not? So we went out to Seville, to a petrol station. He had a thing with car parks and petrol stations. And uh, <laughs> Who loves a car park? Yeah. We get some dodgy character reference here. Yeah, I think the next one was going to be Enterprise. Now? <laughs> <laughs> but were you, were you then associated with Armani at that time? Yeah, I, I basically signed three campaigns. Which is a, I didn't realize, but it's a big deal. I remember seeing the pictures. No, yeah. you're in your pants. Yeah. That's not in a car park. That was in a petrol station. It was in a petrol station. Yeah. So that one of you in the pants, are you in your pants at the petrol station? <laughs> yeah. Because Norman said, look, we need something, we need something physical. So I was doing handstands and <laughs> lunges and stuff like that. Did you actually do cartwheels in a petrol station in your pants and that was the Armani campaign? No, 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 no. We, we ended up with a, like a running start. That was just for Norm and that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the warm-up Bradley. collection. That was for Norm. <laughs> well, no, whilst Norm was running around the petrol station, I was doing cartwheels. <laughs> but they were amazing pictures. Like, and, and that campaign, I don't know if you've seen it, but mm. like, uh, you, you look like a model. Thank you. <laughs> we all remember that campaign. It's not for... I don't think it's for jokey reasons. It's just it was the first celebrity sort of that time. Of and, this, where the and this goes back to the Spice Boys thing. It was kind of like things had gone to a different level in a sense. And for me, it was just, wow, I'd, I've been asked to do some modelling, so I'll do it for a laugh. And uh, they, there was a, you're talking about it seriously. So in New York, they, I don't know if they still do it. They used to paint the adverts on the side of buildings. So I went out to New York and there's a hundred foot painting of me and my underpants. Would you, would you do it again? Would I? Yeah. Well, the cartwheels probably pull a hamstring. Norman calls. One more photo. <laughs> if Norm gets in touch. And Norm wants one to turn the, the photo into a picture that you paint. One for the road. Oh, would I? Of course. Yeah. Oh, Jamo, it's the second goalie we've had in a row. We've got an obsession with goalies and referees for some reason on this podcast, <laughs> but... One of my favourite episodes ever, JMO. It's been an absolute pleasure. Obviously, been you were amazing with me when I played for England. Uh, love you as a person, love you as a goalkeeper and absolutely adored having you on. Appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for having me on on the podcast with Tino Werner. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting a few messages about this as well. It's, we, we, should, we, should, we should address this. We should address this. But are you... So I was, I, was, to this before. I was born in, in Stuttgart with Timo and we were separated at birth. <laughs> Fortunately, I was taken to the Irish part of the family, the O'Briens, and Timo was with the Werner part. He's, we've both taken different trajectories yeah. to get where we are right now. I'm, you know, I'm doing all right, but Timo's doing okay as well. We do need to get you together at some point. <laughs> Never been seen in the same room together. Yeah, I'm bit, pleased you addressed this. Actually, bit like Djokovic Jovo, and uh, Elephant Courtois. in the room, actually, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. I mean, can you come back another time? I feel there's a two-parter in this. I feel point. like there's a hell of a lot more we haven't really gone at, JMO here. There's a hell of a lot more. We can well, go well at. thank you for having me. Uh, do you know what? I, it's, a, it's an honour and, and a privilege to be here, and uh, I get to take away some wonderful artwork. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes, <yeah>, says Chris. <laughs>